Go ahead and have it. Okay. Uh, just blow it. We are streaming. Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, hello everybody. Um, <laughs> Brooke here from Stickmen Media and uh, Jay, who yeah. some of you might know as uh, Into Dreamland. How's it and going, guys? Margaret in the background about to go and make a cup of tea. No, we do. <laughs> uh, because we can't really continue with our cup of tea, without our cup of tea. Uh, oh, and I can see us appearing on the background there. That's good. <laughs> Cool. So this is our setup. You haven't seen us running our setup before, have you? Yeah, I don't use a mic like that. I really, I really want a mic like that. Yeah. Because well, this solved all those echo issues that we had. Yeah. If you remember in the first streams, and it was really noisy and echoey, all the rest of it. That was trying to use the laptop thing, mm. and also simple things like we'd forgotten to turn off desktop audio. <laughs> yeah. So, so we had every yeah repeats. We, we had yeah <laughs> our own voices coming through <laughs> through to us. All right, let me get <laughs> into our thing. So, uh, just to continue the conversation we were having before, I thought what we'd do with you today, Jay, um, rather than get you to play League of Legends or, uh, uh, you know, your usual fare, or, or even streaming uh, PUBG mm -hmm. or Fortnite, which was hella fun, yeah. I have to say, the other day. <laughs> yeah, no, PUBG was awesome. Um, is uh, we'll actually ask you a few questions about your experiences uh, as a streamer and we'll try and resolve or solve some of the mysteries that Margaret and I have encountered um, as we've uh, been exploring Twitch. Uh, mysteries around the vocabulary <laughs> and mysteries around uh, the emotes, which I guess are another part of the vocabulary. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll ask do you, you some do you stuff. Have any, do you have any like particular uh, vocabulary that you've been like stuck on? Okay, so the first thing is um, uh, when I first uh, looked at your stream, yeah. you had a paragraph description that had something about uh, soy boys, yeah. chads, yeah. and solo queue. Okay, yeah, yeah. None of which I understood <laughs> at yeah. the time. So let's start with what the hell is a soy boy? <laughs> a soy boy is a boy who eats soy. Okay, that's rather obvious now. Yeah. <laughs> so, how uh, do you know they eat soy when you challenge them all? Ah, <laughs> uh, so it's <laughs> it's like a. Um, well, you just assume they are because they're like. Yeah, weaker. <laughs> <laughs> And then a, a chad, I guess, is supposed to be like a take on like, uh, you know, those guys from like fraternities. Mm -hmm. So they're, like, they're kind of like bros or like chads. Okay. Yeah. It's, it comes from a, um, it comes from this bit by this comedy duo called, they go by the names of Chad Kroger and JT Park. Mm -hmm. And they went into a courthouse in LA and, uh, they were like fighting for their like right to party. I think there's like a YouTube video on it. It's just something silly. And so I actually use a name that they made up in that called Boomer Kingsley, and that's what my <laughs> alter ego is on uh, on Twitch. Most people on Twitch don't actually know my name. So if there's anyone from my stream, my name is Jay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we blew that. Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but completely anonymous till I blew it. But uh, I didn't mean to mention your name no, or his address, actually, which is <laughs> <laughs> just around the corner, actually. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, so there's something I've like kind of uh, taken up. I've like so I started streaming maybe like maybe at the start of last year. I started streaming and I've like played around with it everything I, my stream actually got quite big for a while because i was really good at one specific champion mm -hmm. in league of legends oh solo queue by the way is like the rank ladder system okay just of the game there's nothing special about it and uh yeah so i my stream got quite big because i was like known to be the best in the world at the time at uh, this person no oh, wow and that's quite the thing yeah it was Yep, <laughs> and I'm no longer anymore. But uh, the yeah, I was just I, I was just like pretty much streaming gameplay rather than like content, which was which came from like myself and my personality. So I you know like started playing around with the idea of like I saw like Doctor Disrespect and other people like that who had like built in kind of like characters into their streams, mm -hmm. and so I thought that was a pretty funny thing to do. And so I've slowly adopted that 
into the creation of this character, Boomer Kingsley. I'm working on it. I, it's nowhere near like the state that I want it to be at, but yeah, it's going to be something that I like develop. Yeah. I have to say, Doctor Disrespect. Um, I can only watch a, a, a small amount of him at a time, so I mm. think his personality that he's adopted works against him a bit. Mm. Whereas I, I can watch Ninja play on um, Fortnite for hours, you know. Yeah. Because um, that guy, you know, he's, he's not really pushing that, you know, the weird personality thing. What yeah. he's pushing is his intense gameplay. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, well, uh, I, I think it's. But I, I, you know, it's funny to watch to switch to Doctor Disrespect and <laughs> have a look what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Well, for me, I've always found it to be like one of the two. So it's like, it's either you're streaming about, be, you're streaming because you're really good at a game, mm -hmm. or you're streaming because, or you're because you're the, desperate the for that, attention. Well, the, yeah, the, the <laughs> way that you the way that you stream is more based on your personality rather than on uh, on your ability to play a game, and. Uh, yeah, so that's the two between, like, Dodgers obviously p plays on that, like, personality character kind of thing. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. I love that name. So, uh, I came across uh, a list of emotes mm. uh, that are actually used in Twitch, and um, I had no idea what there was about, so there was a whole bunch of actual photographs of people's faces, and these mm. seem to be So I actually made one of those of me the other day. Okay. I haven't seen it used on Twitch yet. I don't think it's actually on Twitch yet, but it's at least in Discord, and they were like, I went onto a Discord server that I'm part of, and mm. then I just saw like heaps of little pictures of my face. I was like, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> so yeah. That must be quite a thing there, quite a, <laughs> mm. you know, quite uplifting to actually have a look and say, oh, all these people. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It was, it was like me caught off guard, so it was just my face looking kind of strange. Yeah, <laughs> like that. <laughs> but yeah, th there are a few on Twitch. Well, actually, there are heaps. So you guys can, um, once you get to the point where you're able to become an affiliate, mm -hmm. then you're allowed your own, I think you're allowed like three emotes. I think we're actually... Um, you're probably available to get affiliate. We're actually, I think we need 10 more followers or something to be affiliate. We've got like ah, 40 cool. followers. Yeah. So, we're, you know, week by week. We haven't done anything massive, but week by week we've grabbed another follower here and there. And yeah. You know, it's just sort of slowly climbed, which is good. And uh, I notice our average viewership per slowly hour has up. actually slowly yeah. been going up as well, which is kind of nice. Because that means what we're doing is actually getting more accepted rather than people, you know. Being no. like the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's Hanging up the phone. Times? <laughs> this rubbish is. <laughs> yes. Cool. I'll address that. Oh. Yeah. All right. Um, so apart from the that stuff, uh, we thought we'd get your opinions on our game as well. Yep. So, because what I mean, I, it would be so cool to watch people playing our game. Now it's not multiplayer, so it's you know it's lost one of the elements that I think the most popular things on Twitch are about, which is that multiplayer. Well, Far Cry just came out, right? Yeah. I think Far Cry is multiplayer now, but Far Cry for a long time was single player. Yeah. And I think a lot of people still play Far Cry in a single player mode. And I know that Far Cry is massive at the moment because yeah. a lot of my friends have uh, stopped playing like PUBG and stuff just to play Far Cry. Yeah. Apparently it's awesome. I'm a so big yeah. Far Cry fan myself, but I haven't played Far Cry 5 yet, just Far Cry 4. Yeah. But uh, no, I still pull that every, hour, <laughs> every now and then and mm. yeah, go around and do some stuff. But anyway, we thought we'd, we'd show you, because uh, you will have seen this. I haven't this. seen too much about the tournament. All oh, right. So Toymaker is the overarching brand, yep. essentially. So Toymaker is the name of the novel. And there's uh, we've envisaged a couple of games out of that. One's The Clockwork Assassin, mm. and the other is After the Light. Now, After the Light is really a small chunk of the story just to get us started on yep. doing this, this game thing. And we've actually mm. put up uh, the design recap that we went through a couple of weeks ago just to sort of go through it with you and get your your impressions on whether it's something you would actually stream with, go online and ha actually have a uh, have a go with. So one of the unusual things is it's a fixed position shooter. Yeah. Um, so if you played Brookhaven or one of those um, zombie games in VR, yeah. um, you don't walk around, you are just set up at a particular spot and you've got a particular challenge. It's like creatures are going to come from here and here and here yeah. and there. And you've got to um, kill them all. And, you know, um, 
each level is a different you know set of creatures or a different mix of the creatures that are going to come for you different number so the waves are different <coughs> ours goes even further than that because some of the waves will be more puzzle like so you might have 20 zombies coming at you and two bullets what do you do yeah. <laughs> um, and you know you have to look around your environment then to see how you could actually use those two bullets there might be an exploding barrel or you might be able to actually you know tumble this bridge down or something or, yeah shoot yourself at the last <laughs> resort. <laughs> so, oh, fuck it, I'm done. Yeah. One of the guys came up with that. Is that the way you exit the game? You just take the gun and you <laughs> shoot yourself. <laughs> you should do it, that'd be quite... I don't know about that, actually. <laughs> I, think I don't know on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I know Twitch could ban you for that. Yeah, I saw that girl Twitch Twitch banned for self-harm yeah, like for way. slapping her own face. You'd not be too happy about that. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's the fixed position thing. So... <laughs> something a bit different um, and, and what will make the game really special to play is you'll have these moments of you know intense anxiety and panic as lots of things rushing at you that you have to clear mm. clear away and then slow more deliberative ones where okay you've got all these zombies over there that haven't seen you yet but you, you know you need to clear them out and uh, maybe this one that's patrolling and getting closer to you and but if you shoot that guy he screams and the rest come running at you <laughs> yeah. So, you know, set up something like that where you've actually got to think about it and think, okay, how can I actually manage this? <laughs> and then the next level might well be 50 zombies just running at you yeah. <laughs> that you've got to clear out. So I think that, that it's change VR in based, pace. Right? Sorry? It's VR based. Um, we're going to make it so that it's VR based and um, okay, normal cool. screen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We want people to have that normal screen thing. Yeah. Um, and we're going to test that. And hopefully, we're going to test that at Armageddon. If we get the chance, we'll have um, VR and um, a desktop to actually test on. That's cool. Yeah, watch people Armageddon play it. Armageddon just only ever reminds me of the whole hamster felching thing. When, when is uh, Armageddon? When, <laughs> when is it running? And what is hamster felching? <laughs> <laughs> you do not want to know. <laughs> it's a very, very, very funny audio clip that was actually it was all over, it was all over the interwebs and it was all over um, YouTube a long, long time ago. So um, I think a radio announcer desperately trying to get through a story uh, about it, but <laughs> about it, but he kept cracking up every time he told it. But yes, he lost it. He just absolutely lost his shit many times. <laughs> <laughs> Let you listen to it rather than explain it. On so, so um, what we could do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it might take us away from the court. Just, just Google hamster and Armageddon, and you'll find it. Mm. Okay, I've never been to one of them before. Uh, one of the what, uh, hamster fucking. Yeah, one of those, one of those get-togethers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've I've actually never been to a, an Armageddon expo either. Okay, <laughs> I was thinking of going to uh, this is one if I'm around in. Uh, in crush it for it but I don't know what time in the year it is uh, so which is the one we're going to is that Christchurch or Wellington the 6th of June the Queen's <laughs> birthday one I failed to check no, I can, I can, no idea I we should check it would be nice if we know where we're actually going yeah yeah um, <laughs> anyway so the fixed position horror shooter hmm. um, <coughs> yeah the pilot for the toy maker the, the big game so because where it what we're really doing is we're aiming to become a triple A studio. So we're yep. going to start, we're going to do like, um, uh, what are they called? Um, something or other red, uh, forgotten the name of the games company. D do the Witcher. Um, used to be CD Project, now they're Project uh, Red yeah. or something. Oh, no, or I can't remember what it, I, I know the, yeah. yeah. Um, That's cool. But yeah, so that, that, you know, Witcher was a small game and then Witcher 2 was that next step and then Witcher 3 was AAA basically, they're, they're out there. Yeah. Nice way to progress, really like to be able to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's one chapter from the novel, but Margaret coined this beautiful phrase which I absolutely love, that it's a scary, beautiful, well it's not really a survival horror game, it's just a horror game. Yeah. Because you don't have to go and collect food or anything. That's a mistake I keep making when I keep announcing it, I keep saying it's a survival horror. It's not. It's a horror game, not a survival horror. Well, yeah. you, you do want to survive. You do want to survive, yes, but you don't have to find food and water and all that sort of stuff. You just shoot. It's so how many, how many levels in the game? 60. Alright, that's good. So 60 waves of zombies. There's actually... Um, I can probably have, you, have you made all the levels so far? We've made 40, 
I think, so far. Are there any levels that you've played yourself and you've just gotten stuck? Uh, no, at the moment the levels don't. At the moment the levels don't have uh, much of the programming in. So at the moment you're just standing there, zombies stream towards you, and you shoot them. Okay, so it's yeah. really, really easy. But um, yeah, the real gameplay is going in. You know, now wish yeah. starting to creating as Ben starts creating the behaviours and so yeah. forth. Um, then we'll get the real, the real deal. So sorry, when do you, uh, when you plan on launching it again? Um, we're hoping to launch in October, but um, okay, yeah, we should have a really good playable demo running in, in June. Yeah. Um, and when we launch it, it'll be um, it'll still be a um, early release. Yeah. So yeah, we'll start setting up Steam and stuff like that. Oh, Toy Maker, we don't need to know about. Oh, except there's some beautiful pictures from Toy Maker. That's all the heroes. So you're actually playing. See that guy there kneeling on the ground with the the gun. Yeah. He's the guy you're actually playing in After the Light. Do you have teammates? Uh, not in this game, but in Toy Maker, when we actually do the full the Clockwork mm. Assassin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, you'll be able to play any of those guys, and you'll be able to swap mid-game. Except any the skeleton. Of yeah, he can't can't play a zombie. Well, are those are those four people there. But that is the person, right? Or yeah. Is that, what yep. is that? That's Capalia. That's um, Elodia. She looks a lot stronger. Than, uh, the, the one at the back looks a lot stronger than everyone else. Okay. She is at that moment. She does have the nuke attack. Okay. However, um, it takes a lot of setup. So this configuration that you're seeing there is what uh, is likely to happen in the game where the three other characters have to defend her while she gets ready to do that nuke attack. Uh, okay. So if you're playing Elias and you see you're going to do the nuke attack, you have to keep the zombies off her because it could take a full 60 seconds to charge up. But when she does, it clears the field. Every every zombie's dead. All right. At least dead for a while. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. part, so part of the wave. Yeah. yeah. Part of that. Uh, part of the game is that um, uh, nothing actually keeps the zombies dead because their souls have been released from the halls of the dead. So if you kill them um, after a little while, their souls come back and oh, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they reanimate again. So. You can try to do things like chopping off their heads, and yeah. then you've got a bunch of heads that can't really get to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what was the other guy character? Uh, okay, that's Grim. Yeah. So Tobias Grim, he is the toy maker. Mm. So he's the guy that uh, basically started all the trouble, but he didn't mean to. Uh, essentially, he saved this girl from death, the, the, the powerful one at the back. He saved her from death. Um, that broke the laws of the dead, and therefore all the dead were released to come to find their bodies and come back. So yeah, so yeah, his cock up, everybody else's pain. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So the scary, beautiful part. Um, we want our zombies. You know, we want people to look at those zombies and go, "That's amazing." I love know? that. What do we mean by scary, beautiful? Resurrected bodies in various stages of decay. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great description of beautiful. Yeah, if you're really fucked up, <laughs> you might want to <coughs> qualify that with maybe talking about some of the environment. Or well, just accept <laughs> that people will know that I'm really fucked up. <laughs> yeah, column A, column B, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah so where is this? It? Is an example. So this oh, guy, yeah, yeah. Bony the soldier, there. Um, so he's one of our zombies. Now that is scary beautiful. He's going to look really creepy coming towards you. But, you know, just look at the detail on, on that guy you know, <laughs> and his jacket and his, you know, his sword and his rifle and stuff. Yeah. Everything's fantastic about that guy. <laughs> um, the nice thing, as you get further down the, the, the crypts, uh, the, the catacombs in the game, because all played in the catacombs, at the top level, you're likely to find the civilian zombies, um, and also most likely to find the the more recent kills. So they, the, the lower down you get, the less and less flesh they have. Yeah, because oh, they're, yeah, they're yeah. older. But also, there have been wars from the centuries before, so you start encountering a lot of military oh, yeah, zombies. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that wouldn't really make much sense, because you'd normally start at the top and then dig holes deeper, as dig, out, dig down as you ran out of space. I think they just found a big cave and they went right to the bottom and started filling it. Okay, <laughs> that's the story and you're sticking with it. Yeah. Um, where is it set then? Like uh, what is the, what is the setting of the e game itself? A place called Empire City, which is 
like a Victorian London, okay, yep. but um, it actually doesn't have a, a seaside. It's in the mountains. So, yep. so if you can imagine a Victorian London that didn't have the river, <laughs> or the, you know, didn't have the um, river leading into the ocean, it just had just mountains. Yep. Yeah, just mountains yeah, yeah, yeah. and a river. <laughs> it does have a river called Cramping Brook that's uh, in it. Yeah. But anyway, uh, <laughs> nothing to do with this game at all. <laughs> So in After the Light, uh, you don't get to know anything about the river, other than part of it flows through the caves, so you do get some nice water areas. Yeah. That's another one of our scary, beautiful zombies. I like his pants. Cross-eyed Joe. <laughs> so do you play yeah. horror games at all? Uh, I played... I'm not very good. I like horror movies. Mm -hmm. I really, I've watched most horror movies. Well, I've watched most of the high rated horror movies and I, uh, me and one of my friends tried to go and find the scariest movie of all time. Like, we tried to do that in high school and we both came to different conclusions. I think we've got different uh, perspectives of horror, but, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, different so I'm, types I'm really of good horror. with horror movies. Yeah. But horror games, I'm not too good at. I have played, uh, What's that one where you have to go to the mental asylum? Do you know what it's called? I can't remember the name of it. The uh, mental asylum. Out. Outlast. Oh, okay. Yeah, I played Outlast. I hate that. Silent Hill? I've, no, I've never played Silent Hill. I've heard really good things about Silent Hill. But what about, what's that indie one that, that I like? Amnesia, The Dark Descent. Yeah, I haven't played that either. Okay. So I haven't, I haven't actually played that many horror games. Uh, I, played, I think I've played more horror games on VR <clears throat> than on PC. But I've played quite a bit of Outlast. Yeah. VR just lends itself to horror, though. Oh really? yeah. yeah, I remember when uh, when I first started getting interested in VR. There there was a game out. I can't remember what it was called, but there were heaps of videos on YouTube of people like playing this horror game, and they'd be like breaking down and crying and stuff. And then when I went back on YouTube to try find all those videos, they weren't there anymore. So I can't remember what the game was called. And when I try and show people that VR is really scary, I don't have like a thing to go to to be like, yeah, "This is, this is the game." Yeah, yeah, which is annoying. But so yeah, so we played uh, Brookhaven, and that that we had a few. Um, oh yeah, I played Brookhaven. Mom yeah, yeah. Moments of people, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> panic right things. Yeah. I I took my parents to that place in Rickerton. Um, oh, the um, the VR room. The, yes, the VR room. Uh, my, when my brother was playing Brookhaven there, I. I was waiting until there was a zombie right behind him and I like slammed my hand down on his shoulder and he, he jumped. <laughs> yeah, it was great. We, we have seen similar things in this room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, the, uh, the one I've played recently is Arizona Sunshine. Now, that sort of... It's sort of interesting, but it feels more like a shooter than a horror. I, yep. I guess zombies in sunlight don't really... <laughs> They're just not as scary. W would you say it feels kind of like uh, Left 4 Dead? Yeah, actually, Left, Left 4 Dead's Dead. Shooter. Yeah, it's definitely a shooter, and yeah. I think ours is a fixed position shooter. So mm -hmm. the guys that shoot will be comfortable with it, but we do want to make it scary, beautiful, so that it does actually, you know, tighten the the, the strings of tension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that we can play you like a fi fine violin. Yeah. No, definitely. I like the for people who do enjoy horror games I, I think that um, games like Outlast where mm -hmm. it's more about building tension than you're uh, like in Outlast you can't even shoot you have to just run and you have a torch and you can't yeah that's yeah. not a fun game <laughs> for me but that's one of the cool things but people who do like yeah. horror they love that game like yeah. uh, I've played it with a few people and they, the people who introduced me they, they'll play it like over and over and over one of the things that makes good horror is adding a certain amount of helplessness. Mm. So if you can't shoot, if all you can do is run and hide, which is also Amnesia the Dark Descent, exactly the same thing. You mm. can't shoot. You can hide. Yeah. And, you know, there are various times you have to pull yourself into a closet and stuff and just mm. try and peer out the door. And, yeah. Uh, and that's all you can do. You can't, you know, go out there and attack the, <laughs> attack the guy. Yeah. Um, but that stuff's less popular than shooters. Shooters are by mm. far the, the biggest slice of the yeah. of the um, hard gamer market I guess it's because it's like for most people who 
play people who play shooter games can play for like a long time Mm -hmm. but like it's hard to play for a really long time at that heightened level of like ten like tension yeah i mean that's why i just found it for uh outlast it was like man i could probably finish this game but it's going to i'm going to be like this for the entire time (laughs) playing this game yeah i I guess it does make the job a little bit harder um with uh, trying to keep the player in flow Mm because mm. you keep winding up the tension but if you don't let that off then you know you're going to get people just get exhausted by that and go ah I'll play some more tomorrow mm. um, yeah well, whereas in a shooter you have long periods of boredom short bursts of excitement <laughs> yeah and uh, that you know you can just play that hour after hour essentially yeah. This is another one. So this is um, that level I was describing before where there's one zombie patrolling that's getting closer to you. This is that zombie. He's a sniffer. So So do the zombies all have, well, do these specific zombies have backgrounds? Because the the last two that you showed me, they both had names. And therefore, I feel like you have backstories to those zombies. Uh, Not really. Developers just just sort of create, uh, you know, names and personalities for them. So I don't. They're not, they're not specifically named in the book. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a few that are, but um, they're not specifically named in the novel. But these guys, as they're working on them, they get attached to them and they give them a name and they, you know, okay, cool. to distinguish them. And yeah, you get some idea that they might have had a backstory. So, for example, it wasn't ever planned, but this thing was always blind. So he's blind in life, but he's got really good sense of smell. So he patrols backwards and forwards, doing the, you might have seen Margaret doing the animation of the, yep. you know. <laughs> um, so sniffing and he gets closer and closer to you so he's gradually sniffing you out so he's sort of like a timer zombie really you know he's going to get to you at some point if you don't take care of him Mm. Um, but if you shoot him he's really strong so before he dies you know you've got to shoot him twice maybe um, he'll scream and attract all the other zombies so you can't shoot him necessarily so you've got to put up with the fact that he's getting closer and closer as you're using a silent weapon to take out the other zombies so he's like a timer. And then take yeah. him off last, yeah. So, yeah, so he's like the timer for the whole of the... Yeah, the round. Yeah, that round. Yeah. I like it when games incorporate stuff like that. So it's like, instead of having <coughs> instead of having a physical timer, you can have a zombie that is pretty much a timer, mm-hmm. but you don't notice it. So, like, it takes away that barrier of, like, okay, there's a timer sitting on my screen. Yeah. Yeah. And especially, uh, of course, the, the UI stuff that you try to do with VR, you have to be really careful. Yeah, yeah. If you stick a fixed gauge or something on somebody's face when they're trying to... Um, it definitely takes away from like, yeah. a lot of the... One, it pulls you out of the immersion, becomes mm. less immersive. Um, two, it can make, it make some people feel unwell, mm. just that thing sliding against the, the background mm. all the time. Um, <laughs> and three, it's a really clumsy way of doing a storytelling. Like, this is a great timer. Mm. You know, that's a way to actually do some good timing. And that's our boss character, King Leon. So. Where are his weak spots? Uh, you don't have to say well, that. Well, that'd be telling, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> How much do we want to say before we get to earlier? Yeah, exactly. It's a bloody good question, though. <laughs> I I'll think see if you're going to slip up there. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've been really generous with... Uh, actually, you're sitting off camera there a bit. Oh, am I? Well, yeah, yeah. Put yourself in. Um, <laughs> I think we've been really generous sort of, you know, showing as much as we've actually showed about the development of this game on here. So, yeah. um, you know... You're not going to give me the, the whole, codes. The whole, <laughs> no. So the whole thing, our whole stream is about spoilers for an upcoming game, essentially. Mm. We're telling people all about it. Um, but our yeah. whole stream then, and, and Jesus. <laughs> no, no, we, we don't do Jesus on the stream. Oh. <laughs> we do, however, have Lame. a swear jar. I keep pointing it out. If you want to hear we Margaret, do really have let a loose. swear jar. I'm dying to get paid to swear. <laughs> <laughs> or or you pay and I'll swear. I don't mind which way around it goes. But there should be a transaction involving money. Cool. Uh, yes, beautiful subterranean environments. The next part of scary beautiful. So this is, we've got um, three separate areas. Four really, if you count the, the final boss level. Mm. Um, 
with different lighting. Yeah. So as you're close to the surface, there are places where there's um, where moonlight can actually penetrate the caverns. So you yeah. get these god ray sort of effects throughout these early ones, and the lighting tends to be blue because it's a bit suffuse, a bit foggy. That mm. moonlight coming in, sort of you know, lighting up everything. Does the uh, does the progression of the game take you deeper and deeper? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, King Leon's right at the the bottom of the catacombs. Um, uh, essentially guarding the door to the the, uh, the halls of the dead which is the other world basically mm. <laughs> that's where you go and meet death and show you some pictures of death actually we've got mm. I've always been wondering what he uh, looks like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well, we've got snapshots <laughs> <laughs> came okay. back with pictures yeah we did so yeah so that's some more of the blue area there and you can see little patches of foliage actually happening in areas that are lit because during the day there'd be sunlight falling yeah. on them so lit that's a millennial term yeah, that's I discovered a, that just that's yesterday I don't know if you see it too much on Twitch but yeah that's definitely it lit this party is lit yeah. it means it's fucking go, going off it's awesome <laughs> yeah. right yeah okay yep. so our game is lit man yeah moon lit yeah yeah <laughs> 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 crossover is there with millennial and twitch speak uh i'm not too sure i i think that uh twitch has kind of formed its own yeah style of like language i was reading twitch chat on any like really popular streamers uh channel is just an impossible thing to do once you go over like a few thousand viewers at a time it's just They're the just, chat just goes into yeah. like yeah that uh, that yeah. girl that we actually host, uh, Anna Carolina, that's doing the, mm. the monkey and the cat. Um, she's designing a monkey and a cat. That might be better. Um, way of expressing it. In Maya. Uh, essentially, um, hers is about the maximum speed I can keep up with it. Mm. You know? But I have watched, like, you know, if you are watching mm. somebody like Ninja, there's no point trying to follow that. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it, none of it seems to make any sense. Like nobody can answer anybody or actually have a conversation. And there's all this bollocks that just keeps on kind of flowing down the screen. It's like none of it, yeah. none of it's related, and none of it would make any sense if you could slow slow down and read it. Yeah, it's quite yeah. bizarre. There's heaps of stuff on Twitch that I don't actually understand as well. So they're always they always come up with these terms. Like I think this is one right now called. Ah um, oh man, this makes me feel old to say it. I so I like. Uh, coach League of Legends sometimes mm -hmm. and um, I I will I'll be like coaching say like high school kids and they will uh, they'll just say like stuff that I have no idea what it means <laughs> and then like I'll go on Twitch and then I'll start seeing some more stuff on the uh, on chats and stuff ah uh, um, interesting but it's yeah there's one like it's like M-O-N-K-A-S it's like monkers or something I have no idea what that means and <laughs> th but they just say stuff like this and so yeah I, have you googled it? there's heaps of it nah I just I no, feel like I need to now. now somebody please respond if you <laughs> actually know no, what that what means what they'll do is they'll just post it in the chat and then it's just like there's yeah I don't know <laughs> so every time I try to ask my Twitch chat they try and just troll me back so <laughs> maybe you have a nicer community around you but uh, yeah well <laughs> maybe actually a lot of our community comes from your community because because uh, you've you know hosted us you bring across a few viewers every now and then so I think we've picked up a few mm -hmm. of yours which is good um, this is the uh, the firelit area so this is the next level down in the caves yeah so, so uh, yeah everything's a torch or a brazier or something like that where you've actually got fire um, that gives us the opportunities for doing things with deep shadows because fire is great for having nice bright areas with deep shadows behind it so yeah you might be walking through here and not realize that in that shadow there are 10 zombies just standing waiting for you you know do you have <laughs> of course, you wouldn't be walking in this because that's not our game but you know that you have that opportunity to actually hide stuff yeah, yeah. do you have, have you, uh how do i ask uh, do you have uh, uh like perspective of how far things are so like nah, that was a weird way of asking that what I mean is like would you know how far it feels like in the game yes um, if you're is playing, there a way of measuring that if you're playing in AR and VR yeah um, you get a very good sense of just how distant something is yeah so no, but like I'm sorry I mean uh, as like a developer do you 
do you know how without like putting the glasses on yourself is there a way of like measuring how far something feels in a virtual environment or do you have to put like immerse yourself in order to kind of like test it uh so you can get a good idea from just watching the screen and laying things out because you you um if you've watched some of the things of lincoln laying out those caves mm. you know he can pretty much see how things are but you don't really get the sense of scale until <coughs> you're in there okay yeah. so it's scale more than distance that you're confused by yeah so you might lay these rocks out and then you put the heads there and you're, oh shit i can't climb up there that's too big mm. you know so <laughs> um yeah scale more than distance so would we like to know what what monkers or monkers actually mean yeah, yeah yeah what does it mean so it's a uh, beta twitch tv emote featuring an illustration of peppy the frog appearing frightened while sweating which is typically used in twitch chat during moments of high tension in video game matches to express anxiety that's true there a you go frog that seems like it's far too uh too good an explanation for what it probably is used <laughs> i know I, but there's the same explanation on on yeah, every yeah 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 so actually oh, yeah what i mean is just like the people who use those kind of things in Twitch just like spam them and yeah what it, what almost seems like uh, in like insanity you know like they're just I don't know what that means <laughs> and so they're just like yeah no well this one just means oh fuck I oh, think. okay yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing that's the closest thing to it so actually the, the meaning is probably blur from person to person too as nobody quite knows you know they're just sort of picking it up yeah. in context that this happened with LOL. I don't know if you know this story, mm -hmm. but this is a story that happens often. This mm. happens with lots of people. So one of the ones I saw on Facebook was a woman whose mother had died and she posted oh, about... Oh, she said lol. I've yeah, actually seen that one, And yeah. her friend actually... Well, you've probably seen another one because it happens a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people think lol means lots, lots of love. Yeah. Well, it used to. But it means laughing out loud. Yeah, my so mum my mum's dead. Laughing out loud. <laughs> my mum used to think it was laughing out... Uh, sorry, my mum used to think it was lots of love as well. So, yeah. like, she'd use it in really weak context. I was always like, what the hell does this mean? <laughs> but, yeah. Well, it used to because, you know, you would actually if you were writing a letter which of course mm. hasn't happened for a long time or put, or an email then yeah, then yeah it did mean that I remember I, remember I remember when, like, my mum used to use it when people started saying lol and like in place of slightly laughing or showing any like uh, sort of smirk on their face yeah. so I was in like high school when you say it though it's usually sarcastic you go lol yeah but it was like <laughs> it was really weird because like there would be like there'd be like a couple people who would say lol and then it was like it's so weird like why are you saying why are you saying that and now it's just like everyone says it yeah yeah. funny eh oh uh, yeah it's strange but lots yeah. of things have been taken I was just thinking about um, a friend of mine um, who's gay who didn't realise that um, that queer meant anything else than gay mm. he had absolutely no idea that, that it meant weird or unusual or yeah <laughs> not a, he's like what 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 are the meanings <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to explain that one. Yeah. No. The other one I saw was um, some woman used WTF talking to her daughter. Um, you know, it's like, saying, hey, Janice, WTF. <laughs> Janice went, what? Yeah. <laughs> and she was, uh, she actually just made it up herself as a thing for where's the father. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, who's the father? <laughs> no, it was where's the father. Yeah. It, it was, yeah so, uh, Mum and Dad were separated, I think, and she, the story behind it. Funny. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah. we digress. We do digress. So, oh, <laughs> I'm trying to change the the Twitch stream rather than change. <laughs> yep, not change. so not so effective. <laughs> so some more fire lit cabins. Yeah, hopefully some splody well, barrels yeah, there that we can lit too. make use of. So that might be one of those things where one bullet and twenty zombies. Well, just yeah. gotta time it. Um, those braziers also swing, so you can do things with those with, with a few rifle shots. Yeah. Now, so this is the next level, and this is probably my favourite. So uh, the shadows aren't so deep here, but everything's really constrained and confined, so the area is smaller. What kind of scale would that look like if I was in there? Uh, you should try afterwards. Actually, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we should just continue the stream from Lincoln's machine. You can have a look through. Yeah, if you'd like. That would be cool. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, I guess the thing that makes it small because you can still have big caverns, but you bring the ceiling down, and that adds ma that makes the sense of claustrophobia. But these areas are beautiful. They've got these little fireflies and glowworms in, 
and bioluminescent sort of um, moss yeah. that's around the place. So that's the way the whole of the lighting is. So the shadows aren't very deep. It's actually, you know, some of the brighter levels as you get a bit deeper, but they're more confined and the challenge is a lot more different, uh, difficult. Are there, are there like real world places that you took, uh, that you took inspiration for the levels from? Not really. Um, I think almost all of it's made up on the fly by Lincoln in response to stuff he read in the, yeah. in the novel. Um, so he certainly got the mixture of the big spaces and the small spaces um, as you go through there. There's some things I'm, I'll get him to show you when you're in there. Like there's a, um, this huge atrium area that you end up crossing into about three or four times because there's bridges across from one thing to another yeah. and you have to keep coming back to it to actually get through to the next part. Um, and that's, you know, it's deep and big. You know, you get the sense that if you spoke it'd be echoey, every gunshot you do is going to echo. And yeah all the rest of it um, and there are the other thing that he's played with is verticality so there's several places where you've got this thing that you can look down that's really <laughs> a long way down <laughs> yeah. like I said just keep winding those yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, the strings there oh. yeah more of that area Something kind of dimly lit that doesn't have a lot of deep shadow kind of feels a bit more enclosed and stuffy as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you can imagine it's not the, it's not going to be the freshest air or that, mm. that you're breathing down there. It's pretty stale and dank. It's a fungus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the other thing, we don't really show it off here, but we've got... Oh, we do, right at the end. What beautiful water effects. So we mentioned there's a river flowing through this, so there's lots of watery areas. And this, if I can show you this in VR, is absolutely beautiful with the ripples in there that would be caused by water dripping from the ceiling. Yeah. Um, and the whole area is just stunning. Have you, uh, have you streamed VR onto Twitch before? No. we. Uh, I don't know how you do it. I've never done it. We've but. streamed... Um, yeah. So we've streamed the, um, the, scre the, you know, the bystander screen, essentially, so people can see what, you, what you're seeing, but not as a... Uh, you know, a dual stream shot so that somebody can put a headset on and... Oh, yeah, I don't know if you can... I don't even know how you do that. You can do that, apparently, in YouTube, so I'm wondering if you can do it in Twitch. Yeah. Because that yeah, would be, be awesome for those that do have a headset, if yeah. they could actually mm. experience That'd be a very mm. niche amount of people, though. Yeah. You'd have to be, like, on the VR part of Twitch, I feel like, in order to... Uh, in order for people to really use that. Actually, we only get three tags for the, for the sort of... Yeah, community we're actually in I think you've you got four so. yeah I have four, and do I? yeah you have four so clearly once you get to affiliate you've got is uh, I must, yeah. Yeah. I and I noticed yours are mostly oceanic uh, oceanic um, communities yeah, yeah, yeah oceanic, um, so, so I so I changed a couple of hours to oceanic as well yeah um, but you know assuming most people are going to come here from IRL and um, game development yeah, I haven't really uh, done too much with the community parts of it, apart from like the main one, like the IRL or the like League of Legends, whatever the particular game I'm playing. Mm -hmm. um, but the community ones, I've I've never had someone be like, oh, I come from the Ocean Extremers or I come from the Ocean United or any of those. So I don't actually know how much they do. So okay. Like, so would you know if most of yours are local or if they're? You can get a you can get an extension that shows you where your viewers come from. Okay, yeah, we should do that. And it's like it, it's a live thing as well, so you can see where people are like live. Final area, the boss area, violet again. Oops. That's heading into the violet area, isn't it? Yeah. So that is the violet area. Not a very so good shot. This is, shot, a, this is the final stage. Yeah, so this is the final stage. This is where you meet King Leon. So this is below the bioluminescent area. It's another firelit area just because he's there. Yeah. Um, so And he's guarding the entrance to the Halls of the Dead. Uh, I love that guy. I love the way he's animated. I love the way he's drawn. Um, I th yeah. A couple of little things that uh, niggle me about it. And this is one of the things when, I'm, when we're doing our own stuff, I always find things to... 
that keep me awake going oh that's not really right <laughs> and they're tiny things usually um, but yeah but there's not much of that in in this I have to say almost everything's spot on got a couple of issues with King Leon that we might address about the arms just to make him more story like yeah so I guess uh, so we're hoping to put this on Steam for early access, right? Yeah. So in October. Is this something that you would play? Is it something you'd actually be curious about if you didn't know us? If you, Well, what would make you curious about it if you didn't know us? Given that you don't love horror. <laughs> what would it make... But sorry, ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> what would make you curious about this game? You know, if you saw it on Steam early access, what would make you want to play it if you didn't know us? If you were just, you know... Uh, Coming out at fresh, I like I like watching games that have if they if they have like puzzle elements to them. I like games that do have like problem solving in them because I don't know. Some, I've always been really uh, really good at pro, uh, problem solving. Okay, but I don't. So there are, there are these games called Getting Over It. I don't know if you've seen them, and then there's a new one called Golfing Over It. No, <laughs> there's, it's kind of like a puzzle game, but it's more. It's not really a puzzle game, so you're this guy, you may have seen videos of this, you're this guy, he's like sitting in a cauldron, and he's got a hammer, and you have to swing the hammer with a mouse onto a rock, and you have to slowly climb up this level, and it's really easy to fall off the level. Okay. There's heaps of videos of people playing it on Twitch, because this, it's absolutely frustrating game, because if you fall, it's really easy to fall all the way down to the bottom. It's really, really easy, and it's like okay. two hours worth of gameplay to get to the top. Yeah. And, and that's great to watch because it's funny to watch. Yeah, it's especially funny to watch because people it's are frustrating like, for the player. Yeah, yeah. So if it's frustrating for the player, or just uh, if the player is putting a lot of effort into doing something, then it is quite funny. But another thing that has become like quite a big thing is like these, you know, uh, escape room. I don't. I've never played an escape room, but I've, mm -hmm. I get the uh, idea of it where there are specific. It's like a puzzle. It's I did go and play something. at the one at the Murray Park. Do you find it fun? Yeah, solved a murder there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, there's things I would add to it as a game maker myself. Yeah, I think I've got a better idea than most of the audience as to what goes wrong in that situation, like clues not found and all the rest of it. Mm. I don't think they've they've nailed how to guide people to finding clues. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, there were too many times in our group where um we had to say, yeah, we're stuck. Yeah. <laughs> And that sort of breaks, you know, that breaks immersion. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so I guess, yeah, if it does have, like, a level of problem solving, I'm always interested in games like that. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't actually look on Steam that often for games. I'm, I'm relatively new to Steam. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think halfway through last year is when I got Steam, and I only got Steam to... I can't remember what games I got on it. There was one game in particular that I wouldn't... I don't know, I think it was PUBG. Yeah, I got, there was, PUBG was the first game I bought on Steam. And then I also uh, got Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, Left 4 Dead 2 and some other like games on Steam that I don't really play anymore. Like, mm. I, I got Comedy Night. I don't know if you've seen that. No. Comedy Night is pretty much stand-up comedy. So you're either in the audience or you're on stage. And I sucked at that. <laughs> uh, then there was Paladins, which is kind of like Overwatch. Okay. Um, I was all right at that, but then the community just, it wasn't that much of an enticing game for me. I didn't, I didn't enjoy it that much. I wasn't good at first person shooters. And, uh, and what else? Left 4 Dead. It's just, the, the gameplay in Left 4 Dead is too repetitive for me. So yeah. I, I play one level and I'm done. Like, I can't do more than one level of Left 4 Dead and get excited about it. Uh, I have to say I found the same. I should analyse that and find out what's gone wrong with that because normally a roving shooter I would sort of be, you know, mm. I'd be really into that. But well, like the Left 4 Dead, for some reason, I just found... zombies are so... Uh, they're like the same zombie every time and like even the mixture of ones, it's like, like I know how to deal with... It. If you know how to deal with each yep. mixture of one, then it's like... There isn't that much new about the game, and I don't know. I just that's just my thing with Left 4 Dead. I like zombie. I like I I love zombie movies. Zombie movies 
are like in the in the hierarchy of horror movies zombie movies are like in the top you know in the top tier um I actually watched a really good one recently I can't remember what it was uh, the the ah uh, Girl with All the Gifts it's not really as it was kind of like a zombie movie have mm-hmm. you seen it? no I haven't but I don't know it came out like two years ago and uh and they're not really zombies they have like some fungal infection but they're pretty much they call them hungries <laughs> so yeah. a hungry in my opinion is a zombie okay yeah. and uh yeah I, I thought it was actually a pretty good movie it, it like up there with um, 28 Days Later and I think in zombie movies 28 Days Later is like did you see that one with um, Arnold Schwarzenegger where his daughter is slowly turning into a zombie no I haven't seen that so yeah is it good and yeah it, it sort of was actually I've got I got intrigued by it for I mean it sort of drags me for a while with me for a while because it's not really about the zombie apocalypse and all the chaos it's it's actually a fairly close up and personal thing about this girl going through the change and all the mm. you know the difficulty she's you know having as uh, she slowly turns into this zombie creature and of course the way her parents are reacting so Arnie's her dad and I forget who the mum is so yeah so yeah. that was an unusual one for me and it wasn't really uh, I didn't even find it that horrifying <laughs> I found it um, sad I found it really you know yeah emotional. But yeah, um, <laughs> I've watched a funny one, or watched a funny series lately called The Santa Clara Diet. That's actually got, um, oh, who's that? Who's that girl from The Three Girls? Lucy Liu, Cameron Diaz, and Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore is in it, not the other two. <laughs> Drew Barrymore is in it. Uh, so she's a suburban wife, a real estate agent, um, her and her husband, real estate agents. And for some reason, she dies and comes back as uh, as the undead. In fact, she doesn't even know she died. She just mm. one day realizes she can't feel her heartbeat, and she's eating raw meat. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and eventually, progresses on to actually killing one of her workmates and eating him. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. So the whole series is about her husband supporting her during this hard time you know helping her go and f- select people to kill so they only kill young hitlers and <laughs> yeah so <laughs> the, is her husband a zombie no huh. no he's just a devoted husband who's yeah. trying to help her out yeah so yeah that was pretty funny but yeah so okay we're well, yeah, not talking so about horror that, movies at all really series? sorry is that a series? yeah that's a series on uh, netflix okay. so i've been watching that uh yeah strange strange thing mm. Yeah, but um, no, I'm uh, you know I come from the era of uh, you know James Whale and those Frankenstein movies when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Those were the things that were actually horrifying to me, and um, I, so I got the idea that what really makes horror is that sense of helplessness. Mm. So you can't control the situation. If you were in that situation, you can't control it. You know, so it's like not having a gun or you know, mm. there's something that's really there. And the relentlessness of pursuit. So if something's yeah, after yeah. you, it never ever stops. Even yeah. when you think you've got away, it's still coming for you somewhere. Yeah. Um, so those things really drove my sense of horror. I never really liked the torture porn, like Saw or yeah, Cube yeah. or anything like that. Oh, I like Cube. I don't like Saw, but I think Cube is an awesome series. I yeah, I'm not a fan of uh, Saw. I just thought that Cube One was alright, but Cube Two is one of my favorite movies just like where where they start going through like different uh where like they break down time mm-hmm. and at the end of the movie it's just like it's all what seems to be like some kind of hologram that was for me just insane i watched it when i was pretty young so i was like whoa <laughs> i didn't know like psychological thrills at the time so yeah yeah well i like the psychological stuff don't like the torture stuff so. yeah saw in like have you, like hostile those two I'm not oh yeah no thing. not really a fan of that either that, yeah that's that's also torture porn that's um, yeah I think Hostel could have been done really really cool because I like the idea of like the society and because there, there is that uh, state of like helplessness in it but then mm-hmm. they, it was like too far when it comes to like gruesome like all that gory stuff whatever I don't like Saw just because of that as well yeah, yeah. you're not saying much Megal 
Well, you're kind of sitting with your back to me, and I can't make eye contact with either of you, well, and I'm, I don't know, I know anything Jay about... Jay pushed himself back. Tr- so I am. No, you pushed yourself. You're, you're always forward. I'm trying to fit on this, <laughs> this little screen. You're always right in the Not middle, so sure. I can't really talk to anybody. Well, And I don't yeah. really play video games. You'd... you'd what about horror well, movies? What I do you so th- don't. What do you What do you think your uh, your scariest horror movie would be? I don't know. I don't really get scared that easily. Really? Yeah, I don't have, like have, I don't like the torture porn thing. Have you ever had a movie where you were like you felt uneasy, not because of the torture porn, but because of like how the intensity of horror, or not really? Not that I can think of. No, I like VR because it actually can scare me sometimes. But so, even then, I can feel my mind going, "No, mm. no, we're just gonna." take this for what it is and I can feel it kind of changing the changing the experience yeah so um, it's just sort of sad <laughs> De- Dead Island really good zombie game I haven't played that okay yeah. um, really worth it but uh, so Margaret in that top player just you know goes through not only shoots everything but stomps their heads so <laughs> they're well and truly dead if that's like an option you have you can stomp on zombies heads yeah. after you've shot them why would you not avail yourself of that option <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so no, not really easily scared. So I had more jump scares out of <laughs> that than Margaret. Mm. Were there any jump scares in that? Yeah, I mean, you, I yeah, only you remember keep, the shooting part. You keep coming across things that might be hiding behind a car or whatever, and you don't realise that you're walking past. Or, so no, I had a number of jump scares in that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah, me not so much. No, I I like VR because it has the opportunity to sometimes deliver some sort of yeah. moment. Mm. I, can't, I, I don't think I've actually felt true fear in VR yet so that's what I was trying to find I was trying to find the game so mm. that I could play this game and then get that fear but uh, I think I think you guys showed me one horror ages ago and it was like you were in a room and it was like a doll or something yeah and oh, things yeah. kind of happen and but then the way and like, stuff happens and you yeah yeah the end of it is like right behind you or something yeah yeah so like that is a little jump scare, but it's not like fear inducing. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's like oh yeah, that's a jump because yeah. it's something you weren't expecting. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it jump scares, feel that creepy. jump scares are only good for a second, so they get way overused in movies and things like that. What you really want to do is wind the person up to the scare, mm. and then even introducing it slowly. So, you know, if you come into a dark room and you see something moving in the corner, and you don't know what it is, and you're straining to see it, and you can see a little bit more and a little bit more, and you realise it's half a body crawling across the floor and you know your yeah. tension goes right through the roof it's not a jump scare you're not suddenly going <gasps> you know yeah. you're going <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a completely Interesting thing different we reaction were talking about the other night we were talking about um, sound for the game and Brooke was going through some soundtracks or not really soundtracks per se but more sound design tracks I guess yeah. mm-hmm. and the only one that actually stuck out as scary for me was I can't, what game was it can you remember it was more sound than, than anything. There was no music really involved. But, but what I realised was the thing that would really scare you if you were a kid and you were in bed would be the random sounds that you couldn't identify as anything in particular. Mm. Oh, that's right. So there was one of them. The sound, I, Yeah, I've got it written down what it was. But the sound was sparse. Yeah. Yeah. So there wasn't much of it. But you couldn't actually pick out what most of it was. It yeah, was you just couldn't quite figure out. So if that was coming from under your bed, you'd be upset because you wouldn't quite be able to go, oh, that's a door slamming, or oh, that's... You couldn't yeah. really attach anything to it. That's not my bag moving under my bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and even if it was, ugly. Yeah. But <laughs> given that you can't quite latch onto anything, it's way worse. It's really mm. interesting. I hadn't really thought about that. But footsteps, yeah, it's not going to be nice if you can't see where they're coming from, and they shouldn't be there. That's uncool, but at least you know what it is, so you kind of know what to look for. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. So uh, I guess one of the things we could probably do is it kosher to actually interrupt the stream and uh, take it over to Lincoln's seat. You can do that. Are you going to are you going to turn it off, or are you going to? Yeah. So we'll uh, I guess we'll stop it here, and we'll move across the room and start it again at Lincoln's desk. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're set up for streaming, aren't you, Lincoln? Uh, yeah. Cool. Do you want to take Jay through some levels, and we'll we'll um. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I guess uh, we'll say goodbye from here, and we'll move across to um, Lincoln's desk, and we'll uh, attempt to stream.
Jay actually having a look at uh, some of our levels. In about right. five minutes' time. Yeah, even less. Things going well. <laughs> as long as I remember how to turn off this. Oh, there it is.